School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. We're joined right now on realagriculture.com by Murray Hartman with Alberta Agriculture. Uh, Murray, we're at Farm Tech 2012. You gave a presentation today about canola rotation. What was your message to the group? Well, my message was it's basically a flyover of the prairies and based on crop insurance data, what is the actual kind of intensity of canola rotations across the prairies and what is the yield impacts. And for the most part, it's pretty consistent, surprisingly consistent across the prairies that canola rotations are being intensified by going to a canola with a one-year break, generally canola wheat, and then in some of the areas, canola and canola is becoming a little more popular. Now the yield impact is canola and canola is pretty consistently 15% less yielding than any of the others. So there is a yield impact, but that could be overridden by economics. But then the other interesting thing was canola with only a one year break or was similar yield to two or three year breaks. So our traditional long recommendation doesn't have, I guess, any improvement over short term um, rotation with short term yields. In the long term, though, there could be consequences of a disease getting established a lot more quickly. For example, clover in central Alberta. So that was kind of my message is that this is what's happening. This is the impact. But these are the kind of considerations that you have to... With the, with the profitability that canola provides growers, it's really difficult to get convince them to move back to like a four-year rotation. Yes. Um, and, and so... Are you you really aren't you surprised that we're not seeing more of a yield penalty for shorter canola rotations? Um, not so much from the standpoint of the the penalty of a canola and canola. I think it falls in line with what we would expect. It. But the fact that we're not getting a yield penalty for a canola every second year is a little bit surprising. Uh, but it also stimulates us to think: Well, what research should we be doing that makes a one and two rotation maybe better? in a longer term than it is now because we've kind of avoided it in a lot in the research side. So if a grower is going to grow canola every two years, every three years, what are some of the things they should be doing to make sure they're managing that shorter rotation problem? Yeah, that was the last part of my talk and I hate giving advice to somebody to do a short rotation canola. But I said if you're going to do it, to me there's a couple of really important things. One is really monitor your fields, scout them really intensely because you need to change things if something shows up on your field before it escalates into a big problem. And if you're not scouting your fields and you're doing a short rotation, you're just kind of setting yourself up for a disaster. Whereas if you find, say, for example, your black leg resistance or you're starting to break down in your variety, well, maybe I better change varieties. Don't plant the same canola variety on that field. But you have to be really actively looking for problems. And if you can figure out what it is, you can sometimes change your management to correct it. And if you can't, then you have to extend your rotation. Okay. Then the other aspect is, if you can't diversify your rotation with more crops, try to diversify within the crop. So instead of saying, oh, I get the best yields with Invigor, I'm going to grow that variety every year. And, well, that's the worst thing you can do from risk perspective. So you should be diversifying that canola crop on the field. So you change herbicide tolerance systems, change varieties, so you're diversifying what's happening in that crop or in that field. 